That wasn't too long. Good evening. I'd like to call the Sheboygan County Board of Supervisors uh, monthly meeting to order. Chairman Koch, who is not able to be with us tonight, um, but uh, right out of the chute, I'm taking it over. <laughs> Anyways, um, are we in compliance with the open meeting law, Mr. Clerk? We are. The agenda was posted on the 13th of May at 315. Thank you. Would you all join me, please, in the Pledge of Allegiance? Once we get the computers up and the screens up, make sure we're all in on the roll call, please. Pardon me? I can't hear where she's. Oh, okay, thank you. Yes, please press your attend button, your I button. And that should indicate, there we are. Sometimes you have to press harder. All right, we have 22 supervisors present. Thank you, John. Uh, approval of the April 26th, 2022 journal is before us. Uh, Supervisor Brower. And make a motion to approve. Motion's been made to approve. Is there a second to that motion? Supervisor Clark. I'll second. Thank you. All right. If there's any questions or changes or corrections, basically. Um, if not, let's all vote. Okay. I should just ask, too, real quick, if there's anyone on Zoom that are Zooming in or on the phones, not necessarily supervisors that are here voting. But, okay. All right. The journal is approved unanimously. Okay. Thank you. Um, consideration of appointments by the chairperson. Mr. Right. Clark. <clears throat> Uh, Affirmative Action Commission, Christian Ellis, Amsterdam Dunes Advisory Committee, Roger Testrudy, Edward Prochuk, Communications Council, Christian Ellis, Emergency Medical Services Council, Wendy Schobert, Land Information Council, Al Bosman, Little Elkhart Lake Rehabilitation District Board of Commissioners, Paul Gruber, Local Emergency Planning Committee, Vern Koch, Traffic Safety Commission, Gerald Jorgensen, Transportation Coordinating Committee, Kurt Brower, and Thomas Wagner, <clears throat> for the chairman's appointments. Okay, thank you. Chairman Gary, uh, Supervisor Gary, <laughs> former Chairman Gary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I move to concur with your appointments. Thank you. Is there a second? <clears throat> Supervisor Brower? Oh, I'm sorry. And there's a second. I, if I see the screen right, next time I'll get you right in order, Jacob. Any discussion? Any questions? All in favor, please vote your desire. There we go. Thank you. Those appointments are approved unanimously. Thank you. Appointments uh, by the county administrator, please. To Affirmative Action Commission, Corey Raisler, Communications Council, Brian Olson, Jason Ebert, Russell Schreiner, 
Michael Brungraber, Emergency Medical Services Council, Joel Lermanski, Daniel Altus, Holly Parker, Parker, Blaine Werner, Stephen Zills, Michael Lubert, uh, Roberta Felicki Pulaski, Land Information Council, Eric Zinkel, Local Emergency Planning Committee, Eric Bowler, uh, Charles Butler, Terry Katzma, Stephen Cobb, Stephen Steinhardt, Starlene Grossman, Daniel Altus, Dean Dolenz, and Traffic Safety Commission, Michael Meeson, Sean Spivalo, and Andrew Cunninger. Okay, thank you. Supervisor Gary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to concur with the administrator's appointments. Supervisor Emil. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will second that motion. Thank you. All right, if there's no questions, or please let everyone vote. Oh, we might have a question. I just have a question. Speak in your microphone, please. Can you hear it this way? Okay. I just have a question. There's a couple of people on the EMS that were from out of town, like from Cedarburg and I think some other town. I was just wondering. I thought everybody had to be from Sheboygan County. So. Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, we are following our ordinance and, and the appointments we make. And in some cases, depending on the, the position, uh, they may not live in the community, but they're serving the community or working in the community. So sometimes these volunteers can be difficult to identify or they have to certainly be interested in serving. But as long as they're working in the community or serving the community, they may not necessarily live in the community. OK. All right. And we voted on that. We have to vote yet now, so please do. And those appointments are approved unanimously. Thank you. Presentations tonight? We have Greg Schnell, Transportation Director, with uh, project updates. Good evening. Thank you for your time. As you can see from the presentation, creating safe and reliable transportation today and tomorrow is, is, the, is our Sheboygan County Highway Department's uh, model. We are the maintenance authority for 450 miles of County Trunk Highway. We also have maintenance agreements for 465 miles of Township Road. We also have a maintenance agreement with the state of Wisconsin of 170 miles. So if you put that in perspective, you can drive from here to, uh, to California and one round of snow removal. That's kind of a, a big number when you think about it. We're also the uh, bookkeeper or the record keeper and inspectors for 152 bridges throughout Sheboygan County. Next slide, please. All right. So as we know in Wisconsin, all we have is two seasons, construction and winter. <laughs> Construction season consists of surveying, purchasing right away, designing roads, paving 30 miles of road, uh, landscaping, bridge construction, bridge repair, mowing, municipal maintenance, all that kind of stuff goes into it. And we do that with 95 people. We also have a full repair shop, mechanics, welders, uh, tire repair. I'm going to go through a little bit of, of what our scope of work or our methods of work are. This is a picture that we just taken recently of County Trunk C. It runs from County Trunk P to the West County line. It's a milling operation. In this particular we'll be reapplying two and a half inches of asphalt back here. So the asphalt that's being taken off, it's being put into the back of our trucks, it's delivered back to the asphalt plant, will be run back through the asphalt plant so we can recycle it. This is Indiana Avenue, which I'm sure many of you have driven through either lately or started to, and now you're just trying to avoid it. Uh, this is a, a federally funded project that we're working alongside with the uh, non-motorized funding that was given to us uh, several years back, and it's one of the last projects that will be going on. So what we're reducing, it's called a road diet. We're reducing the four lanes down to two, adding some bike paths as well as sidewalk on both sides of the road. It goes our section. Our county responsibility is from 24th Street to Esslinger Park. So um, from the road standpoint, uh, it's about a $5.5 million project. Our share of that is $3.5 million. 
and then the non-motorized is putting in a million dollars as well. So it's a it's a big project. Uh, it's going to be going on the rest of the, the construction season, probably end of October, beginning of November, uh, to be completed. This is another picture of Indiana Avenue. You can see it goes up uh, Taylor Drive just a little bit to the bridge uh, approaches. Uh, here they're getting ready for the placement of concrete. This section will be concrete from the intersection back to 24th Street. This is County Trunk V. It starts at uh, uh, County Highway um, OK and heads to the state park. It's a pulverizing pay. Pulverizing means that we come in with, if you want to put it in perspective, what you use at your home for tilling up your garden. This is a big piece of equipment. It's eight feet wide. It tills down into the asphalt, gets a little bit of that gravel to keep the tools uh, tooth, tools clean or uh, cold to uh, in order to, to uh, bring that all together. We'll come back in, start grading it up, and put a fresh layer of asphalt uh, five inches thick over the top of that. We are in the process of rebuilding the intersection of County Trunk V and I. If you're not familiar with this, uh, it's at... Uh, real close to uh, Kim's historic five corners. So actually we're turning five corners into four corners. Um, this is a, a continue, this project has been started many, many years ago. Uh, there used to be a home on the corner just across from Kim's where that motors parked or real close to that. Um, those people had approached us and, and mentioned that they would like to get out of their home. So we took the opportunity of purchasing that so we could reconfigure the intersection. It should be and it provides that. We're also doing a little free advertising for the town of Lima. That's their town hall where that large scraper is running there as well. So. I just want to go back. Uh, on your desk tonight um, is a list of the road construction projects that we have planned for this season. <coughs> Starting with the top one is County Trunk TT. Uh, it goes from sea to the railroad tracks. Unfortunately, we are going to go back and do a little rework. That will be happening in June. Um, to replace the, um, the bike uh, pedestrian uh, paths that run alongside that. County Trunk S from State Highway 23 to 57 is a mill and pave. Um, similar to, so that'll be similar to what the C project is. County Trunk F, FF is a pulverizing pave. When we do a pulverizing, again, that's, we put down five inches of asphalt. So it's a little bit more expensive of a project, but you get the longevity. When we do a mill and pave, you're going to start to see some cracks that'll probably happen within that second to third year, sometimes even earlier than that, just from the free saw cycles that we go through in Wisconsin. County Trunk V, I already touched base with that. Um, County Trunk M, 20, uh, State Highway 28 to County Trunk I is a mill and pave. County Trunk D, mill and pave from 28 to HH, uh, EH uh, from 67 to 57 is a mill and pave. County Trunk SW to SS, pulverize and pave. County Trunk O, a mill and pave. This project is already completed. As far as the asphalt goes, it needs to have the shoulder work done yet. County Trunk E is a mill and pave as well. From J to 23, that needs the shoulder replaced on it yet as well. County Trunk C to the West County Line, that's the earlier one I talked about. I did uh, talk about the five corners and the reconstruction there. Obviously, re reconstructions are a lot more expensive than, um, than what the uh, average mill and pulverize and, and, uh, and pave would be. Um, when you think about that, an uh, uh, overlay now probably cost us, cost us $150,000 a mile. Um, we've seen a 20% increase in oil cost alone this year. Um, you guys feel it at the pump. We're feeling it on the asphalt end of things. Uh, we don't know where that's going to end. There's uh, a lot of uh, things happening with the market. Um, right now we're locked in through the uh, uh, middle of July, so we're trying to get as much of our paving done as possible. Obviously, it's not we won't be able to get it all done for, in that time period. The pulverizing pave a mile is about $250,000 a mile, and to reconstruct, that would be reconstructing, would be can, from starting from the bottom to the top, putting in all new asphalt, cutting new ditches, drainage ways, pipe, um, and then repaving is about approximately $1.75 million. As I mentioned, the, uh, with the Indiana project, um, that's, a, that's a project that's been ongoing for several years. 
and uh, it's finally coming to fruition so we can get that finished up. So it's, it's federal funded, so our, our staff is not building that. It's, it's um, let out to a private contractor. We're working with the, the DOT on that. Uh, we also have three bridges that are going on this year as well, uh, or four bridges, I'm sorry. Um, on the bottom, you'll see those. On County Trunk V, that's a part of the reconstruction that's happening down in the village of Waldo that we're assisting with the village and the village is kicking in on uh, for the curb and gutter and storm sewer work. We have a bridge on County Trunk W that is actually bundled with the Rousseau Road Bridge so we can get better prices on, on bidding and, uh, and design work. And we also have the uh, center road in the town of Greenbush that will be happening in July. So there's just a lot of work going on. If you look at this list, um, just in the paving alone in the reconstruction, we've got ten million dollars of stuff happening. And, uh, we're looking forward to getting it all done before we have to start harnessing our equipment for winter and uh, re repeating the cycles all over again. I know it was fast. I appreciate your time and patience. And if you have any opportunities to stop out at the highway shop and want to speak with me, please give me a call and we'll organize the time to get together. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Greg. <clears throat> yeah, sure. <laughs> to make it all happen, we need to have an asphalt plant, right? <laughs> <laughs> what? It's been a really long day. <laughs> Uh, just to give you a little bit of an update, uh, next week, Monday, uh, the contractor's coming in to start to do the um, underground digging for the foundations for the scale and the silo. Um, from that point on, it's going to be real slow in progression, only because, obviously, you see it on the shelves at the store. Uh, supply just isn't there. So we're have, we're getting, we have some challenges with that. We do have most of our prices locked in, so we feel, we're feeling pretty comfortable with that. It's just delivery. We will not see the new plant up and running until probably uh, beginning of June next year. So it's going to be, the site's all prepped, so we can do some work in between time, running conduit, getting uh, electrical lines pulled, that kind of thing. Uh, the concrete pads uh, placed for the, for the uh, feet to sit on for the silos and the uh, and the drum. So, again, just another thing that we have in our that we have to work on this yet this year yet, as well as cutting all the grass, uh, cleaning up the bridges, cleaning up the trash, and uh, and getting everything else accomplished that people are expecting of their of their tax dollars. So again, I'll go back now. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Are there any public addresses this evening? There are none. <clears throat> Letters, communications, and announcements? Uh, we have one resolution from Monroe, Monroe County Board of Supervisors about <coughs> clean water. We will receive that for information. And that is all. Thank you. County Administrator's Report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good evening. So it does look a little different up front here, and Chairman Koch has allowed me to share that though he is vaccinated and boosted, uh, just yesterday, I think last night actually, he was a close contact with someone with COVID. So though he tested negative, I think last night and this morning, he chose to on the side of caution. So we're sorry about throwing the vice chairman into the fire here, but I think Supervisor Opler's done an excellent job and we thank former Chairman Tom Wagner for coming up and, and helping navigate up there because it is it takes a little work. So my compliments. Um, as you know, particularly the veteran board members, but I presume the new board members are recognizing this as well. This is a highly complex organization. I mean, there is a lot going on in Sheboygan County government. 19 departments, and every department is almost like its own business, you know, focusing on health care, focusing on law enforcement, or planning, conservation. There is a lot going on here, a lot to learn. And of course, we have our upcoming uh, annual county board leadership forum for the board to get into the weeds more. And I think it's really been one of the secrets to our success 
and working in collaboration, particularly with the budget process. But a lot goes on here behind the scenes. I mean, way too much to get into, but just last, at the last board meeting, Scott Meliff approached me. How many of you know who Scott Meliff is? A handful of you. Scott Meliff is the program director for WSCS. WCS is the cable television that shows and broadcasts these county board meetings and common council meetings and goes to school meetings. And in fact, uh, Scott did, I think, almost all the TV8 programs that we did for nearly 15 or 20 years. He's really been a dedicated public servant. And the mission of WSCS is to make local government more accessible to the citizens of Sheboygan County by providing more access and a direct link to some of these meetings. Uh, in fact, you may not be aware of it. I wasn't until I looked into this just earlier today. WSCS has been around and serving this community now for 35 years. And again, Scott, the program director for 22. Often Scott is behind the scenes, in fact, behind this door, helping run these meetings or one of the volunteers or staff that they have. But last month, Scott approached me. He said, you know, every year or every periodically, they'll forward on a program or something they were a part of for recognition. And I had no idea he did this, but uh, Scott took the lead to submit the U.S. Customs Facility and County Terminal video that he shot last year to the best of the Midwest media uh, fest. I imagine you've all been there before, right? <laughs> right, right? I'm sure it's all these media type behind the camera, behind the scene folks that, that go to this, but how nice of him to do that. He also submitted the public service announcement that we put together with the support of the county board and public health, our health and human services department. And so for some of you, I presume you may not have seen the, the US Customs Facility and County Terminal, and particularly if you're newer to the board, this was a tremendous investment by the county board, over $5 million investment to build this new US Customs Facility to support our businesses, Kohler and many others that fly in and out of our community. Also the terminal, to have a, a place to greet people, to have a positive impression, to receive good service. And so it was a collaboration and investment from the Sheboygan County, from the state of Wisconsin, and the Kohler Company also has put skin in the game. In fact, they continue to cover the operational costs of U.S. Customs. Some of you I know are aware of this, but this may be new to some of you. So if I could ask Cheryl to tee up the U.S. Customs Facility and County Terminal, we're only going to play half of it. It's five minutes long, so we're going to play about two minutes and 15 seconds, because I know we don't have a lot of time this evening. But uh, for your information. Welcome. I'm Sheboygan County Board Chair Vernon Koch, and on behalf of the Sheboygan County Board, I'd like to welcome everyone to the grand opening of the U.S. Customs Facility and General Aviation Terminal at Sheboygan County Memorial Airport. The Sheboygan County Board strongly supported this addition. The airport has approximately 40,000 annual aircraft operations and is capable of handling international range business jets. It is the fifth busiest general aviation airport in the state and the eighth busiest overall. It also has a $26 million impact to the area and is a tremendous asset to our community. The addition of the customs facility will help it continue this legacy. Greetings, my name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrator, and I'm so pleased to be standing before you in front of our brand new U.S. Customs Facility and Sheboygan County Memorial Airport Aviation Terminal. What a facility, what a wonderful investment for our community. Years of planning and teamwork went into bringing this to fruition, and partners including the U.S. Bureau of the uh, Wisconsin Bureau of Aviation, the U.S. Customs, Border Patrol, and the private sector, namely the Kohler Company. But we also had so much support from the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation, businesses such as Johnsonville and Bemis and others that certainly are going to benefit from this tremendous asset. It's good for economic development, it's good for tourism, and it's going to be a vital asset to continue to improve our community for generations to come. So if you've never been out to the airport, please come out and check out the new customs facility. Check out the beautiful terminal. Such a nice 
first impression when people fly into Sheboygan County and we hope you too will be proud of another community asset that's going to help make good things happen and further strengthen our community and our economy. Hi, I'm Matt Grinnell. Poor Matt, we cut it off just before. <laughs> he had a great thing to say. He was probably the best thus far. Well, as you can see, we're very polished, professional presenters. We do this daily. Uh, we look at it and we think, wow, how, how, did, how did they get the award with us uh, being presenters? It's not necessarily our, our, uh, in our wheelhouse, but all involved, I think, did a nice job. And again, it's a, it's a compliment to Sheboygan County, and particularly it's a compliment to Scott Meliff and their organization for highlighting this and, and making this happen. And I wanted to thank and acknowledge Greg Schnell because, again, if you look historically, the investments that the county board has made in our transportation system. We consolidated from about seven sheds to four. We built the new $22.5 million facility out in the central part of the community. The county board has continuously over the years uh, invested in our airport and the customs facility of the new terminal, yet another showcase improvement. And just uh, what Greg almost forgot to mention, but the asphalt plant, that's over a $5 million investment, which is key to supporting our transportation system. So uh, we appreciate the support of the board and the community, the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation and others, where these things wouldn't be possible. And I wanted to ask Greg if he could please come forward real quick. We have from the best of the Midwest Media Fest 2022, Award of merit to Greg and Matt and Scott Mila for their good work at the airport. Let's put our hands together for Greg. <laughs> On that same note, COVID is something we're all very, very tired of. But sadly, uh, COVID is not done with us and doesn't know borders and continues to impact businesses and families and communities. And, and it, just, it just continues to be a real challenge and an ongoing battle. And early in that process, when we all pulled together and did our best to inform the community and, and learn about this and, and how do we prepare, uh, the decision was made to put a public service an, uh, announcement together for the community. And, and that just, just doesn't happen. But to me, when it did, I thought, what a wonderful reflection on our community and our community. Bill, could you please tee that up? I'm David Cohen. I'm Louis Gentine. I'm Michael Stair Suprick. I'm Terry Kotsma, state representative. My name is Elise Opal. I'm a pediatrician at Aurora Children's Health. 2020 has been a challenging year for us all. And I want to thank you. And I want to thank you for all you are doing to slow the spread of COVID-19. Vaccines are on the way. But we must continue to take precautions to protect ourselves and our loved ones. Doing this. Doing this. Doing this. This will help our health care providers. Support our school systems. And keep businesses open. I'm asking you to please limit social gatherings. Stay six feet from each other when you can. Stay home when you are sick. And wear a face covering in public. These small actions make a big difference and will help keep our community safe. Together, Together we will, we will persevere. persevere. For more information on how you can slow the spread of COVID in Sheboygan County, visit SheboyganCounty.com. That, that public service announcement was also identified and, and recognized by the best of the Midwest. And I was hopeful that Kurt Brower could please come forward and I'll share with him the certificate. And Kurt, as you know, is the new chair of the Health and Human Services Committee. And we appreciate his leadership as well as everyone at Public Health and Health and Human Services. Please put your hands together for Kurt. I haven't looked at that in probably a year. And that's the case for many of you, but it is something to see how the community pull together in our, in our area. I'm proud of that. I hope you are too. Speaking of pride, it's National Police Week. It's National Police Week. Um, 
National Police Week is observed every year from May 11th through the 17th. And if you're not aware of where it originated from, in 1962, President Kennedy proclaimed May 15th as the National Peace Officers, Officers Memorial Day and the calendar week in which May 15th falls. So back in 1962 is when this got started. National Week, Police Week pays special recognition to those law enforcement officers who have lost their lives in the line of duty and honoring America's law enforcement community. I'll readily admit there are a lot of national days and national weeks and holidays, and this has been one that I haven't been as mindful of, but I found myself feeling particularly mindful of it this year. And I hope you do as well, because our law enforcement officers deserve our support and our appreciation. Um, the history of the board here has been really impressive with the support for our sheriff's department. A strong county board support. In fact, I asked Wendy Sharn and our finance director to confirm this for me. But if you look at, I think, the last 20 years, the most signif significant property tax levy allocation year in and year out, we've got 19 departments, transportation, health and human services, a lot of very important departments. The most significant property tax allocation each year goes to the sheriff's department. It says a lot about the priorities of the county board and our community. I'm, I'm proud of that. For me, it's really been uh, a growth experience because I've, I've always respected law enforcement officers. I, I grew up to respect law enforcement. Always thought highly of emergency responders. When people are running from trouble or running from a crisis, they're running toward it. They're remarkable people. It's a mar remarkable professions to be in. And uh, for the first time in my life, we now have a sworn officer in our family. My, my daughter's uh, husband, my son-in-law, is an officer in Wauwatosa. He's a Wauwatosa police officer. And they met at Concordia. And she'd bring this young guy home, was checking out my daughter. And I'm sizing him up. And I'm thinking, who is this young man? What do I know about him? And like any young man, he has his strengths and weaknesses. But he chose the law enforcement profession. And I can't tell you how proud I am of him and how much it's made me even appreciate law enforcement officials more. This young man has had his finger on the trigger and has had to make life and death decisions. This young man was the first to respond to the mall shooting. He was involved with the Deer District tragedy that just happened last week. He is interacting with gunshots and overdose deaths and family members that are torn apart. And it's just remarkable to me. I like to think those of us in this room, or some of us are a little more seasoned, we've seen a lot in our lives. I haven't had to deal with many of the things he's had to deal with in his early 20s. Just remarkable. Just remarkable. Uh, Sheriff Corey Raisler, to his credit, has been doing a law enforcement memorial. It's going to be this Thursday, I think at 11 o'clock. Uh, you all received, uh, I think, a copy of the brief program. I've gone to it in the past, and it's always well done, short, sweet, but just a very nice memorial. And I recall being at it, at it last year, and Senator Devin Lemieux was giving the remarks, and he mentioned that there nationally, and I think it was 265 law enforcement officers who died in the line of duty. And that's significant. I took the time to look at it this afternoon. And for the year after, for the year 2021, it's 618. And I started going down the list, and you know, you can kind of imagine what some of the tragedies might be. Um, you know, automobile crashes, uh, gunfire. In fact, there are 62 law enforcement officers who died in the line of duty from gunfire. 22 had a heart attack, uh, 14 were struck by a vehicle, number of very 
sad situations. Uh, gunfire was at the top of the list until recently. 439 law enforcement officers last year died in the line of duty from COVID. The average age of these individuals was 48. So I encourage you to take the time to pause and be thankful for what our law enforcement officers and emergency responders do and have done, the sacrifices they've made, the sacrifices their families make. I think of my daughter now, and you know, she really, when an incident happens, is my husband coming home. I can recall in the past hearing about a tragedy or a shooting and, and being upset by it and concerned, but never did I think about necessarily calling one of the emergency responders that was there. So if you get a chance, uh, take the time to thank a law enforcement officer this week. And if you're available Thursday for the memorial, I know Sheriff Raisler would appreciate you participating. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for the report, Administrator Payne. Resolutions to be introduced. Resolution number one. From Executive Committee regarding approving use of American Rescue Plan funds number four. I am referring that to the Finance Committee. Resolution number two. From Transportation Committee regarding authorizing sale of county property to Elkhart Lakes Road America, Inc. That we will assign to the Executive Committee, please. Ordinance to be, ordinances to be introduced. There are none. Supervisor Testrudy, I would recommend your choice of adjournment. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. I move to adjourn. Thank you. Is there a second? Supervisor Brower. Second that motion. Okay. Any comments on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. And press your eye button. I'm so used to make, so used to committee meetings. <laughs> yeah. So, Supervisor Smith, <laughs> say aye. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> See, hey, couple. There we go. Supervisor to Strudy, double check your button, please. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. We are adjourned until next next meeting. Thank you.